Engineering 305, problem 347. I think this problem is pretty um, interesting because there isn't even a problem statement. Here's what they give you. They give you this table, and some of the values are filled in, and you're supposed to find the rest of them. And with more circle, this is, this is a good problem, but um, you go, what? Okay. So what do we know? What do we know? Well, we know that sigma, or sorry, sigma, I keep calling sigma, epsilon, the principal strain in the one direction is 400 micro, and the principal strain in the other direction, in the y, or in the 90 degrees from that, is minus 600 micro. So I can draw, oh, I got sparkly on, I got to turn off sparkly. Um, I can draw this and say that, well, let's just put principal one in the x direction. It's positive, so that's a way, so that is 400 micro, and that's what that is. And then this is minus 600. Again, I'm doing that somewhat redundant. This is strain P2, and I'm, I'm showing that it's negative, but then I showed it in the negative direction, so it should be written as positive. You understand. You understand what I'm doing. And, and that's the important part, that that is, okay, so I can then make my list here, epsilon P1 equals 400, and epsilon P2 equals minus 600 micro as my units. All right, I want to solve this problem using Moore's circle. The only other piece of information I have is theta is equal to 18.43 degrees-ish, 18.43. All right, get rid of the problem statement, slide this up. If I'm doing more circle, you have to remember, I'm going to plot epsilon P1, epsilon P2, or epsilon, epsilon X, epsilon Y, and shear, shear strain, um, but it's gamma over two. Those are the things that go into that. So I'm going to draw my coordinate system and epsilon P1 is 400. So I'm going to make that one, two, three, four. And epsilon P2 is minus 600. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that defines my circle. This is a kind of a cool problem. This defines my circle. My center is at minus one, and my radius is five, one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, all right, no, I mean, not a great circle, but it's about what I give you. There's that. What is, if I, if I look at that table briefly, they're asking me for the principal strain or the maximum strain. Well, the principal strain is going to be this, which is the radius of the circle, which is five units. That's right. That was five. But now that's gamma over two. So gamma principal is equal to a thousand micro. Get all my fancy colors and circle my answer. All right. That's what the maximum shear strain is going to be also. We go back to our problem statement. That's our maximum shear strain. And then what they're telling me is um, my theta P, that is the angle of orientation between my X axis, my Y axis, and the N and the T axis, is 18.43. So that means, since it's positive, that this is my x-axis, and it goes up to that. And that is, I'm going to say that's 36 degrees, because it's we're in 2 theta land, remember? We're in 2 theta land, 36 degrees. So now I can start.
I could do the trig, and in fact, that's probably the easiest way to do that. If I want to figure out what, if I want to figure out what epsilon x is, it's going to be equal to 500 times cosine 2 theta that 36 degrees. And if I want to figure out the strain on the x, the shear strain in the xy, that's going to be equal to, well, the shear strain over 2 is equal to, I'm jumping ahead, is equal to 500 sine of 36 degrees. Well, I left my phone downstairs. Let me go grab that. We'll do some calculations, and we'll uh, start putting answers to this. All right, so I punched that in, and I got answers, but this is wrong because this is this distance here. Right? So really, I have to take that and subtract the center, which is minus 100 micro, because it starts, this starts back here. It doesn't start at zero. So that distance, I got to subtract 100 micro, and I'm going to get 304 micro. Um, fortunately, this height is, that height is correct. That height is correct. And the other thing I'm going to wind up doing is that I've got to draw this line, right, to get this point. And, and that's going to be the strain in the y direction is going to be equal to, well, I have to start out at minus 100. And then I'm going to subtract 500 cosine 36 degrees, which is what, yeah, I should have done the other time. That this term should have gone in there. But that's okay. We live and learn. So that's 404 minus 100. So that's going to be minus 504 micro. And now I think I finished up my table. So if I pull up the table, you can see I'm missing the strain in the X, strain in the Y, and the um, shear strain. So there you go. There's some answers, and I should appropriately box those. Or maybe I'll put is the strain in the Y direction, and then and then put my box around them. But I don't. You know, I don't want to say I'm done with that. I'm going to go to Ames Web, and I'm going to punch that in, and then I'll copy and paste that below this so you can see what my um, – you can see this. This is high quality. High quality. And and we'll get the Ames Web answer, and we'll make sure things match up because that's what you should be doing. You should be going out and doing, hey, you got the tool. Use it. I'm going to go grab that. I'll clip it and drop it in so we can look at it, and, and I'll be right back. All right, so here, here we are. I went out, and I did the Ames Web. I brought it back. But here's what I want to show you to, to make sure that we're on the same page is I need to know EX. I need to know the strain in the X direction. I need to know the strain in the XY, and I need to know the shear strain in the XY, and I need to know the strain in the Y. And then that allows me, and I solved that, so that filled in our table. Then I could use this setup where I put in the normal strain in the X, and I'll let you see that I put the right things in. The normal strain in the X, the normal strain in the Y, so I got 304, 504, 586, all right? And then I calculate, and it comes back with the normal strain, and now I can pull this up. Here's my problem statement. I had 400... I had 400 in the X, which is what I had. I had negative 600 in the Y. Yep, that's what I have. And I had an angle, a principal strain of 17.98. Well, that's because I was working with 18 because I dropped 0.4. So, yeah, a little bit of sloppiness on my part, but we could have been there. And then the last tidbit is this maximum in-plane shear is 1,000. And you remember, that's what we got. That's the golden box up there. So there you go. I got to move that out of the way. I got to get that out of the way. 
So it all works out. We did it with this high quality picture, but if you needed to, if you need the crutch, um, there is a more circle that could do this. You could have put in a shear stress transformation. I guess maybe let me go do that a sec, um, just because I can. All right, now just because I could, I went in and used this um, plane strain transformation calculator, which I put in what they gave us. That is that the stress in the X direction was 400 and the stress in the Y direction is 600. All right. And, and then there was zero shear strain because those were my principal. And my transformation angle was minus 1800. And then they came back and said, well, then... Your normal strain after the transformation is 304 minus 504 and 587, which, there it is. There it is. We're good. We're good. So, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's automated tools that are available. You can play around a couple different ways. Um, Clearly, I have to take the autofocus off my camera, but that's okay. We're, we're always learning. This was a new setup for this again today. So um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well, and uh, we'll see you later.